a new round in the legislative tennis match between the House and Senate over religious liberty. Two weeks ago, the House served up its unanimously approved Pastor Protection Act. But this past Friday, the Senate tacked on an additional and very different RIFRA bill and sent it sailing back over the net. What will the House do with HB 757 now? Also tonight, Campus Carry is back for debate this session, but some lawmakers are proposing a stunning alternative, tasers. Lawmaker starts right now. Welcome to Lawmakers. I'm Bill Nygut. It's day 25 of this year's legislative session. They're having a very busy week down at the Capitol ahead of next week's uh, crossover day, which comes on Monday. That's the deadline for bills to pass out of the House or Senate and cross over to the other side of the Capitol for consideration uh, before they're dead for the session. So we're going to expect a lot of activity down there this week. And who better to keep track of it than our Shelby Lynn, who's down at the Capitol right now with her report. Hi, Shelby. Hi, Bill. That's right. We are expecting a busy week this week as lawmakers rush to get their legislation to the floor for a vote. We're seeing longer debates on some issues like last week with the controversial religious liberty bill. It happened again today. The House passed a new version of the so-called campus carry law after another long debate. But the controversial measure still faces an uncertain future in the Senate. What this bill does is allow those Georgians who have a Georgia weapons carry license to be able to defend themselves from a threat if it presents itself. Representative Jaspers explained the gun carry bill as a necessity, pointing to the rising number of crimes on college campuses. The bill would allow students 21 and older to bring a concealed handgun on campus if they have a concealed carry permit. It's a real world solution to a real world problem. I wish as everyone in here does that the women and men who attend these schools and walk among all of us didn't have to do this, but in today's world, it's a must. It's their constitutional right, and we need to just restore it. But there are exceptions to the gun carry proposal. Only handguns would be allowed. Also, guns would not be allowed inside dorms, fraternity and sorority houses, and not at sporting events. I speak today asking you to empower would-be victims with the ability to defend themselves to stand up to predators that would otherwise prey on them because they are smaller, weaker, older, disabled, or simply outnumbered. I want to make it clear that today we're not voting to allow guns on campus. Guns are already on campus. People are being robbed at gunpoint in college buildings, on college campuses. Guns are there. What we're voting on today is to allow law-abiding citizens the opportunity to defend themselves on college campuses. But the opposition was just as passionate, like Representative Carla Drenner, who is a college professor and the mother of a college student. Rather than making anyone feel safer, allowing students to possess and use firearms on college campuses will likely breed fear, fear and paranoia among fellow students. No one needs a PhD to understand that introducing guns among binge drinking, drug using, suicide contemplating, hormone raging college students is good policy. Supporters of this campus carry bill see an opportunity with recent high profile campus sexual assault cases to push for more campus carry laws. But I'm here to say that guns on college campuses are not the answer to keeping women safe on college campus. It is arming the very predators who currently use alcohol, drugs, and intimidation. We know that a majority of Georgians do not want this, let alone the chancellor, the regents, presidents of universities, professors, moms and dads, and many students. These, and not us legislators, who do not have to run or live on a campus are the people who will feel the greatest impact if this bill becomes law. And we aren't listening to them. After two hours of limited debate, the House passed the bill on a vote of 113 to 59. It now goes to the Senate for review. But the House passed a similar gun bill two years ago, and the Senate eliminated the campus carrier provision in that measure. 
A frustrating day at a House committee hearing for Macon Republican Representative Alan Peake's marijuana expansion bill. The committee gutted the measure, removing what some considered the most controversial part of House Bill 722 to allow marijuana growing operations in the state. Well, I'm extremely disappointed that we didn't um, move forward with a uh, medical cannabis cultivation bill, but I'm, I'm also a realist. You know, uh, the opposition from law enforcement was may have been too much to overcome. Um, there was some real concern from my colleagues about that. Um, but, but we have taken a step forward if we move forward with what's in the substitute of expanding the conditions and uh, provide an opportunity for more citizens to participate in the registry, and that's a good thing. And so, um, you know, you don't always get what you want in the legislative process, uh, but if we can um, continue to provide opportunities for our s more and more citizens, then, then that's a good thing. While the committee, in the end, may pass Peak's measure allowing more illnesses to be treated with cannabis oil, patients still have to get the oil from outside Georgia. That means they're breaking the law when they bring it back into the state, and that's apparently not going to change anytime soon. The Judicial Non-Civil Committee is expected to hold another hearing on Wednesday. Turning to the Senate now, the Regulated Industries Committee voted today to send Senator Renee Unterman's SB 352 to the floor for debate. The bill would create new rules for daily fantasy sports websites like DraftKings and FanDuel, two of the most well-known. It would require fantasy sports companies to register in the state and pay a registration fee of $50,000 and an annual fee of $10,000, which would go to education programs like the Hope Scholarship. The measure would also ban those under 18 years old from playing online fantasy sports. Georgia is one of several states beginning to regulate the popular online betting sites. Now, Bill, lawmakers are also considering new regulations for unmanned aerial vehicles, like drones. A measure to form a drone commission in Georgia is headed to the Senate for debate. The Science and Technology Committee passed it today on a unanimous vote. And, Bill, we're going to have more on what the drone legislation in both the House and Senate on the show tomorrow. Back to you in the studio. Thanks a lot, Shelby. All right, we have a lot to talk about tonight, and we have some of the uh, top members of the legislature here to talk with us, as well as our colleague Jim Galloway, the political writer for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution and the editor of the Political Insider blog, which you read on the AJC website. Also, Representative Wendell Willard, chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. He's a Republican from Sandy Springs and one of the most powerful men in the House. And Senator Vincent Fort, he's minority whip and a Democrat from Atlanta. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, let's very quickly pick up, Jim, if we can, on something that Shelby reported and start with you. So uh, we saw campus carry pass by a pretty overwhelming margin in the House uh, uh, this afternoon, heading to the Senate. You have any reason to expect it's going to find dif uh, different well, uh, uh, as, treatments as, there? As she said last year, that's where the bill got held up. Right. That's where the, the Board of Regents uh, flexed their muscles. They've held a, a fairly low profile so far this year. I think in the next three or four days, you're going to see that ramp up a little bit. Uh, I was struck by some of the changes that have uh, been made in the bill. Of uh, pistols only. We won't, we won't see uh, uh, AR-15s with huge clips uh, being paraded on, camp on campuses. I think that would scare quite a few mothers. Yeah, Senator Fort, um, your colleagues, many of the Democrats on the other side of the building uh, have been against this. Um, what kind of effort are you going to make in the Senate, uh, assuming you don't want this to go through? I mean, you're exactly right. Uh, I think it's a bad idea. Most of my Democratic colleagues in the Senate think it's a bad, bad idea. We're going to talk with the Board of Regents and, uh, you know, just make our case that this is not the right thing to do. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll find enough uh, Republicans to slow it down and take a, uh, a longer look at this. It's just but I think the overall thing that I'd want to say is we're spending a lot of time on, you know, some of these red meat issues, fetal tissue and RIFRA and that kind of thing as opposed to, you know, some of the core issues. All right, we're going to talk about fetal tissue in a minute because you're looking across the table at the man who's, who's uh, introduced that legislation. Uh -huh. Before we get to that, uh, Chairman Willard, uh, uh, Jim Galloway and, and Shelby in her report point out there were modifications in this bill before it passed out of the House right. today. Good idea, those changes? I didn't really keep up with the specific uh, bill as it progressed uh, through the process bill. It was it was one that came to the floor. It had, uh, you saw a lengthy debate today. It uh, divided pretty much along party lines. Mm -hmm. I and 
a few other Republicans opposed the bill, voted against it, but I think overall the uh, the Republican uh, caucus was in favor of it. Okay, and we'll watch how that develops uh, as it gets over to the Senate. All right, uh, Representative Willard. Senator Ford's already thrown down the gauntlet. <laughs> I was going to take this up a little later, but let's go forward. You've introduced legislation that would, and tell me if I'm wrong, essentially ban the sale of fetal That's tissue right. in Georgia. Only the uh, fetus itself. And, and the, uh, the reason behind it was uh, back during the summer, we had a good bit of publicity come about as to uh, the pa perhaps marketing of uh, fetus and uh, I had several people call me up as a lawyer and legislator that said is this something that happens in Georgia and I said no I've never heard of it happening I don't think it can be done here after saying that expressing it to a couple of my constituents or friends I said you know I better look at the law on that and be sure I'm correct so as I looked into the law uh, and also asked uh, legislative counsel to do the same we both came to the conclusion it was not actually a closed door and uh, from that, uh, generated the bill that uh, I put together. And the bill itself only addresses the, uh, the selling for compensation of a fetus, whether it be uh, aborted by medical standards or by uh, natural abortion. But, but to be clear, I mean, I think that, that when the, these videos came out this last summer, the, the governor uh, ordered uh, a quick investigation to find out whether, whether this, yeah. this was yeah. happening in Georgia, and they found out that no, it was not. Right. That's true. And I say the, the only thing we were trying to look at and do is, is it possible to happen? Yes, there's a possible uh, way it could occur. And so we wanted to put a bill together that uh, closed that issue. Now, what about donated fetal donated tissue. good point and that was the thing we wanted to be sure was was still recognized that for for research purposes a mother could make a donation of the fetus for that purpose without compensation so it wasn't to stop the research side it was just to be sure we didn't get into a marketing and selling of uh, fetus senator fort you know, and i i'm not going to impugn my friend's uh, motivations in introducing the bill. But, you know, the investigations, as Jim has already said, showed <clears throat> nothing. As a matter of fact, the, the people who've been indicted have been the people who uh, set up that, that video and uh, kind of doctored it. So uh, I think it's alarmist, and I do think it's a red meat issue that uh, the right wing, this is an election year, by the way, <laughs> and uh, a lot of these issues, uh, RIFRA, guns on campuses, as well as this issue are red meat for the right wing well, in an election so, year. So you sort of with a broad brush paint all of these as political and therefore not necessary for the state of Georgia? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. Well, but all right. So, let me. Uh, you know, I mean, <clears throat> it's, you know, politicians when they have an opportunity and, you know, we're going to have the shortest session in a long time where people are getting ready for elections. And I think it's unfortunate to the extent that the issues of housing and better wages and health care are, are being ignored. Right, right. Let me because you opened the door. Yes, sir. Let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Willard. So I we understand what Senator Ford is saying. We do understand that the legislature is is a Republican legislature and Republicans have got to go back and run for re-election. And there are red meat issues. Do Democrats have red meat issues as well that they've got to go back to their constituents and say they took up? Sure. They sure. voted against campus carry? Some health care <laughs> issues, housing issues. Uh, these, I think, fall in the same form of category. Yeah, but the difference is P polling. They have the voting. numbers to pass them. <laughs> and, <laughs> it's not as many. You know, yeah. And so that's that's a major difference we need to take into account. Jim, you want to get in the middle of this? Oh, I'll just say minimum <laughs> wage and I'll leave it at that. There you go. <laughs> Nothing good. Red meat issue. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. Um, just respond, if you can, to what Senator Ford is saying. You, Republicans, you're always talking about too much government, too many laws. Yeah. If there isn't selling of fetal tissue going on in the state, why do we need a statute? Well, as, as I stated earlier, my uh, intent and has been to say, if it's, even though it may not happen, hasn't happened, we want to prevent it from ever happening. So, do you think the Planned Parenthood videos were doctored in a way I didn't that know they were. Uh, I don't know that they were. I, I, I've heard and read uh, recently there has been... Uh, 
indictments, I believe, for yeah. for these being uh, staged. Uh, misrepresent misrepresenting who they were. Yeah, okay. right. Exactly. Right. Who the people were. So that that okay. you know is saying is at least that it, we know of it isn't happening in Georgia. It hasn't happened. I don't think it was broadcast the fact that if it did happen. So right. whether right. it has occurred, we can only say there's not open information about it. Okay, fair enough. Let's turn to an issue that uh, you're right in the middle of as chairman of the Judiciary Committee, and that is all of the bills relating to religious liberties. Mm -hmm. you, are, you right now are holding on to SB 129, the Josh McCoon bill, which From last, last year. year passed the Senate, uh, and you've said already it's going nowhere in the House until after crossover day. We don't take up Senate bills till after crossover. Generally, day. unless there's a, a need like an emergency, which we had with the uh, Congressman bill recently. Right. So the, the, the House unanimously passes pastor right. protection, goes to the Senate, where uh, Senator Ford's Republican colleagues take what seemed to be a relatively uh, benign measure and added Senator Greg Kirk. The First Amendment bill, they call it a belief. Yeah, what do you, so it's back in your court. What are you going to do with it? Well, it hasn't come to me. And I, as I understand, Bill, it will not be a bill that goes back into a committee. It is now a bill that has passed a House. It's gone into the Senate. When it passes the Senate, it then becomes a bill to come back for consideration as agree, disagree by the House. And I can assume it would be a disagree. <laughs> by disagree, then it goes back over the Senate. They hold their position. Then you'll have two two sides appointing a conference committee to uh, go through that and find if there's a solution to it. Jim yeah. Galloway. And the real negotiation starts right yeah. there. Yeah. And it, we can recall <laughs> that this is the sort of measure that the maneuvering begins, and the next thing you know, it's 1145 on day 40, and it's still kind of up in the air, yes? Right, right. And I would, I would expect, I, I would expect that y'all are going to delay it until after at least Super Tuesday and let things calm down just a little bit. Good guess. Uh, but one, one, one question I do have. I mean, uh, in, in the last week, we have seen some uh, remarks from a certain senator uh, who has a bill before you, uh, the SB 129, uh, and he has taken to social media he is, uh, to, to express his opinion about the House and the Speaker. Does that help odds that you will take you folks will take up that bill? I, I haven't heard his comments, so I don't know what he said. Well, you you, you know me. that Senator McCoon because oh, yeah. he's been on the show yeah. talking about this. I wasn't uh, listening that night. <laughs> well, he not only went to the well, and you heard him, and we can talk about this in a minute. Okay. <clears throat> but after going to the well, was then confronted by the speak by the Legislative Council, uh, who okay. apparently oh. used some rather salty language in telling uh, so Senator heard. McCoon what he could do with his speech in the well. So I heard. But how does that affect how well, your members over I, there? I, I don't know, uh, Bill. The, the uh, House, Senate Bill 129 is still in my committee. Uh, it may be considered. If it is considered, it is going to be considered with the action taken last year whereby it was amended. With, with the anti-discrimination. It was amended in committee. It is now a closed issue as far as that amendment. It can't be taken off. So at this point, if the bill does go forward, it goes forward with the anti-discrimination. Let me get you in here, uh, sure. Senator, for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, it may be uh, news to you both that uh, Josh McCoon was on the show last week, and he said as far he figured SB 129 was probably dead, mm -hmm. and he was uh, uh, laying, hit, resting his hopes on the Pastor Protection Act with mm -hmm. the amendment no. from uh, Greg mm -hmm. Kirk. Um, mm -hmm. Do, do you see that the House, is it your opinion that the Republican leadership in the House is trying to tone down in every way they can what the Republicans in the Senate passed in terms of the language? Or is any bill not a good bill? Well, you know, I'll be honest with you. The original bill, SB 120, I mean, the Pass to Protection Act, uh, as it came out of the House, it, the House voted for it unanimously. I was surprised at that because it has some defects in it from my perspective. I think that it would allow uh, religious organizations with affiliated nonprofits to discriminate. Uh, so I was really surprised that it came out of the House in the version that it did. And then it came over to the Senate and was made exponentially worse. Uh, and we had a real tough debate uh, last week on it, which was unfortunate, some unfortunate things said. What I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting, though, Jim, is it in a strange way, it feels as if the Democrats in the Senate who oppose 
any of the more, the stronger language in, in the Kirk measure, sort of seem to have allies over there in the House leadership oh, that, who and, also don't want... And, and this, is, <laughs> this is actually one of the more, more important shifts that have occur, has occurred in the legislature in the last, I'd say, 10 years, that you've had the Senate become, the Senate Republic, uh, the Republican Senate become the kind of the ideologically driven chamber mm -hmm. in, in the legislature, and the House has become the cooling saucer. Mm -hmm. If you will, and that has happened. I mean, yeah. the Senate used to be <clears throat> seen as the place where cooler heads prevailed. That's not the case anymore. So it is. I understand your point. It's an interesting uh, evolution or devolution of the relationships between the two. All right, bodies. we have to take a break. I don't want to get off pastor protection after the break for just one more moment because you, especially Senator Ford, I want to talk to you about a tweet that mm -hmm. the lieutenant governor sent out last Friday. Mm -hmm. Uh, afternoon and the implications it brings to, to bear on this entire debate. So stand okay. by for us for a minute um, and we'll come back to the discussion. The House passed a measure today spurred by the recent cancer diagnosis of former President Jimmy Carter. The bill would allow patients with stage four cancer to get the highest level of treatment and medication without having to meet certain criteria currently required by insurance companies. Uh, Representative Mike Joka stressed the importance of the bill. Let's watch. As y'all are aware, back in early summer, President Carter, a constituent of mine, had metastatic cancer. And he was allowed to take the most advanced medication and his cancer free at this time. We want all the citizens of Georgia to be able to enjoy those same benefits. Many times when we talk about what we do in the House, we talk about uh, different commissions and different things that we need to do, but this one cuts straight to the heart of why we're here. We're here to save lives. So we're going to uh, come back in just a minute and continue our conversation, but first, how well do you know your lawmakers? Representative Joe Wilkinson represents House District 52. He was sworn into the General Assembly in 2001. He's a retired Naval Reserve Captain and a fifth generation Atlantan. He attended the University of Georgia and he was UGA's first intern at the state legislature back in 1967 and 68. He loves history, has helped World War II vets edit their memoirs and has never missed a single day of the session. I'm on Finding Your Roots. Hip-hop pioneers LL Cool J and Sean Combs both grew up without ancestral roots. I never knew the extent of my history. Now, Henry Louis Gates Jr. is about to remix their very identities. Your ancestor was not a slave. He was free. It's incredible. You see any family resemblance? That's unbelievable. On the next Finding Your Roots. Tonight at 10 on GPB. On this date, February 22, 1850, Georgia Governor George Towns approved our state's first law providing grounds for divorce. It contains provisions you'd expect, like divorce allowed in case of adultery or desertion, but it also contained this measure. In cases of cruel treatment or habitual intoxication, the jury could grant either a total divorce or just a divorce from bed and board. That apparently meant you wouldn't have to sleep with or feed the transgressors. I don't even want to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Lawmakers. Joining me, Jim Galloway from the AJC, uh, Judiciary Chair in the House, Wendell Willard, and the Minority Leader in the Senate, uh, Vincent Fort, thanks again for being sure. here. Uh, Senator Fort, late last week, the uh, presiding officer in the Senate, Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle, in referencing one of the bills that has to do with religious freedom, freedom of expression, mm -hmm. putting a religious slogan on a headband in an athletic mm -hmm. meet, he tweeted out something. Uh, he said uh, that it was victory over radical atheists. Now, he says he was talking about just that one measure. But he's also, of course, suggesting that it's radical atheists who are opposing the other religious liberty bills. I mean, it seems to me clear that that's the implication. Mm -hmm. If it's not, I hope he'll correct it. 
Mm. What do you think when you hear about something? I'm, like I'm not going to disagree with your assessment, and you know, I'm not a radical atheist. You know, I believe in prayer and the, uh, and uh, and I believe in God. So that kind of uh, tweet, that kind of communication, I think, is something that does not add to the civility of the political discourse. I mean, I, it's unfortunate I had not heard that before. Uh, I, you know, dividing people. F- you know, between allies and enemies is, I think, not what we need at this point when we have the national political atmosphere so now, incendiary. Right now, if 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 to the, to to the, to Cagle's point, there was an out of state. A national group that challenged the use of the University of Georgia and Georgia Tech's uh, uh, employment of chaplains. And specifically, I think that's what he was talking about. But in the context of the religious liberty uh, debate that occurred last uh, last week, I mean, that's when the Facebook page, uh, post went out. I, uh, I Facebook. Think I thought he tweeted. I yes. apologize. Uh, it, uh, it was it, it was it was uh, fairly startling. So what? Um, what you know, uh, Chairman Willard, here's what, when I saw that, I thought about it, if you don't mind jumping in on this. Um, it seems to me, in a way, the rhetoric of the presidential campaign is sort of going, it's coming downstream. We, we hear from candidates, especially on the Republican side, from a Ted Cruz, from a Donald Trump, uh, this effort to drive wedges um, uh, that that rally the conservative religious parts of the party uh, against other candidates, and and in a way, this this felt to me a little bit like channeling Ted Cruz calling on religion as a as a weapon against your opponent. Well, the, some of the candidates are quite strong and strident in their positions, and and they, uh, I guess, are trying to uh, what's the word I'm looking for cater to that side of the, the religious groups and uh, the evangel- evangelical part of the uh, populace. And so that's what they're looking to do is bring that vote into their camp. Um, we do have a, a, a 2018 race for uh, governor. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's what I was going to say. There's Building we, up for that. That's right. There's, it's two years out, two and a half years out. But I think that's a good indication that the uh, Republican primary election uh, campaign has already begun. So you're suggesting that Lieutenant Governor Cagle is positioning himself for a run for governor? I'm not suggesting it. I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's, he talked to him, apparently. I, I, think, it's, <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious uh, that uh, evangelicals are maybe the largest uh voting group within the Republican Party. Well, then I suggest, Jim Galloway, it'll be fascinating to watch how the Georgia primary plays out on next Monday, because as we saw in South Carolina, uh, Ted Cruz's efforts to appeal to the evangelical vote did not work in South Carolina. We'll see how they work right. here. And we've got, we've, we, here. And we, we've got a WSB TV poll out this evening that's showing Donald Trump in the 30s, oh, yeah. Rubio next, and then Cruz. Wow, mm-hmm. fascinating. Uh, yes. and, and and you've got a candidate in this race. Well, I, yeah, I came out with uh, John Kasich. I think he's been a good governor. I think he's uh, performed admirably in uh, Ohio. He had a good record in Congress for dealing with all people and segments. So I'm and he'll be very here pleased. Tomorrow. He'll be here tomorrow. He'll be here. Yeah, that's got right. A, that's right. And uh, we know you're a Bernie Sanders man. We've talked about All right, real man. quick, we do have to say one other thing. Sure. Uh, because people keep trying to figure out who to blame for Donald Trump or who to thank for Donald Trump. Newt Gingrich was on uh, uh, Fox and Friends and he said uh, this morning, it's Fox and Friends that have made Donald Trump the star of the they Republican invented, they Party. Invented. That they <laughs> invented gave, him. Gave him a weekly uh, broadcast <laughs> of what, Friday morning every time he right, came on about some issue. <laughs> exactly right. Newt might want to take so the responsibility for him himself. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Listen, that's all the time we have. Thank you all so much for this conversation. Enjoy. That's the end of uh, day 25 of this year's legislative session. We have 15 days to go. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at GPB News or at gpb.org slash lawmakers, our website, where you can get a lot of additional information about this year's session. And don't miss Political Rewind on GPB Radio. We're live Wednesdays at 2 and every Friday at 3. Jim Galloway, my colleague, is there with me. We really do have the best group of insiders talking politics you could ask for. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Bill Nygut. Good night.